Logan Gidley, White House Deputy Press Secretary. Sir, thank you for coming back and welcome here to America's Thanks so much Newsroom. for the time. Uh, I know you're aware of the Michael Cohen interview from earlier today. What's the White House reaction on this, and what are you hearing from the president on it? Uh, look, quite frankly, for the media to give credence to a convicted criminal uh, who has lied uh, on multiple occasions and self-admitted doing just that is quite frankly laughable. The president has maintained and has said many times he has never instructed Michael Cohen to do anything illegal, and we stand by that. What is the White House expecting, meanwhile, uh, from these Michael Flynn documents that are about to be turned over this afternoon, 3 p.m. deadline the judge has set um, to learn more about what happened with the interaction of the FBI and Michael Flynn in that interview from January 2017? Right. Well, you made the, the best point, probably, and that's the judge himself wanted more information about how this information was obtained. We know James Comey even made comments uh, under oath and said uh, in testimony that, listen, uh, we knew there were things at the White House that weren't set up yet. We took advantage of that to get information. Uh, that's a problem, and I think that uh, the facts will bear themselves out in that, in that case as well. But the fact is, uh, most Americans are concerned about, or should be concerned, I should say, uh, about exactly how this information was obtained, and I think uh, that, that we'll actually know that later on when the, the deadlines are reached. I want to go back to this interview with uh, Harris Faulkner here on Fox from yesterday. Uh, the president talking about Michael Cohen here. Watch. I never directed him to do anything wrong. Whatever he did, he did on his own. He's a lawyer. A lawyer who represents a client is supposed to do the right thing. That's why you pay them a lot of money, et cetera, et cetera. He is a lawyer. He represents a client. I never directed him to do anything incorrect or wrong. Specific question. Did Michael Cohen tell the president if he makes this payment that it could be a crime, it would be illegal? Did he say that? Look, I don't know about that particular part of the private conversation. I know what the president has maintained, that he's, he's never instructed Michael Cohen to break any laws. The fact is, uh, Michael Cohen's a convicted criminal, and the FBI had him dead to rights. And what he decided to do was to reduce his sentence. And in the meantime, he cut a deal and betrayed a former employer. Meanwhile, I want to ask you about this Wall Street Journal report about the uh, president's Inaugural committee uh, currently being investigated by federal prosecutors. Sarah Sanders went on with Martha last night and responded this way to that. That doesn't have anything to do uh, with the president or the first lady. Uh, the biggest thing the president did in his engagement in the inauguration was to come here uh, and raise his hand and take the oath of office. The president was focused on the transition during that time and not on any of the planning the for the so can you respond to this? This is the Wall Street Journal headline, Trump inauguration spending under a criminal investigation by federal prosecutors, Hogan. Right, that's ridiculous. And Sarah Sanders was absolutely right. This has nothing to do with the president of the United States, Donald Trump. It has nothing to do with the administration. During transition, as you know, the president had one focus, and that was to come into office, set up a government, and right the wrongs of the Barack Obama administration. He did just that. On inauguration night, everyone knows the president of the United States has one task, to show up, thank everybody for their service, to help him get elected, and dance with the first lady. And that's exactly what he did. Let's talk about the border wall. What comes of this next week when uh, you know there's a deadline? The president said he'll own the thing. Does he still feel that way? Look, what the president owns is the constitutional duty to protect the American people. And what we saw on full display for the world to see in the Oval Office was Chuck Schumer, the head of the Democrats in the Senate, and Nancy Pelosi, the head of the Democrats in the House, say to the American people, we do not stand with you. In your protection, we stand with hundreds of thousands of people who are here illegally and unlawfully, as opposed to hundreds of millions of American citizens. That's a dangerous place for an entire political party to say, we disregard the safety and security of American communities and American families, and instead stand with those who come to this country illegally, many human traffickers, drug traffickers, child smugglers. That's a bad place for them to be, how and the much, president wants that fight How much all concern day. is there that you could get the blame for this? Um, and, and if that's the case, the president have any plans next week to address the American people and explain why he's taking the position he's taking? Well, we're talking about several tactics here in the White House and how we can move forward. But, I mean, look, I was standing in the Oval Office and watched Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi give each other nonverbal cues the entire time and basically refused to give eye contact to the president because they were trying to play off each other. And what they did when the president said, we're going to have this conversation in a transparent way in front of all the world to see, they didn't like that and didn't want that. They prefer those back 
uh, those locked doors and those back rooms smoke filled to make deals and cut deals that hurt the American people. But the president said no more. I'm standing for you, the American people. They are standing for people who are here illegally. That's a big difference mm -hmm. in parties, and I think the American people understand just where each camp stands in that, in that particular matter. You mentioned Ch uh, Chuck Schumer several times there. Here he is on the Senate floor on this issue yesterday. If the president really believed what he tweeted this morning, that his new NAFTA would pay for the wall, he wouldn't be threatening to shut down the government. It's not a serious proposal. It's a throwaway idea the president use, used in the campaign and still uses to fire up his base. Yeah, Hogan, I mean, the, you mentioned that Oval Office exchange, and there were some stunning moments, and one of them stunning even to members of the president's own party uh, when he said he would be proud to shut down the government over this. Is there any fear um, in, in the White House that, that the president gave up some, some leverage in this debate with that remark? Now, what he's doing is telling the American people he's proud to stand with them and proud to protect them. For a second there, when you said you were going to play the clip of Chuck Schumer on the Senate floor, I thought you were going to talk about in 2006 when he and Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden and Barack Obama all voted for a Border Fence Act to secure the, the border uh, along the southern area of this country and also vote for border security. Some reason, though, they've changed their tune, and I think one of the reasons why is because Donald Trump is in the White House and they refuse to work with somebody on the right who wants to protect the American people. Also, the political calculus has changed. They feel like they can have these people rush the borders, come into our country, be a drain on society, and then get them as voters later on. It's a deplorable position for them to be in. The president's on the right side, and he's with the American people. Seventy percent of the American people agree with this president on the issue, and for the life of me, I cannot figure out why the Democrats are standing with illegal aliens as opposed to the American people. On that point, again, does he, does he plan to explain to the American people what's, what his position is? Oh, he's done it multiple times in multiple areas. Remember, oh, I get it. October. Listen, he's, I, my, my, he's doing a ton of interviews. I get it. But maybe the Oval Office, maybe the Roosevelt Room, maybe the Rose Garden, perhaps, on a nice day in December. That's a pretty good uh, strategy. You want to come over here maybe and get a job? I, I've and got a job. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. But listen, two Octobers ago, uh, this president put forth a 70-port immigration plan. The first part of this year, back in January, we put forth four pillars that we were trying to stand by and explain to the American people just how dangerous the situation is. And Democrats said there was no crisis. There was no danger to the American people. Then the videos surfaced of the caravan throwing rocks at our border agents all along the way, the instances of rape, uh, convicted criminals in the caravan, terrorists in the caravan. And now all of a sudden the Democrats are nowhere to be found. He wants to have this conversation transparently out in the open. Democrats don't want it because they know they're on the wrong side of the American people. They're adhering to their uh, radical left base and also some of those special interest groups that pad their pockets every election year. Okay. Meanwhile, well, the president needs a chief of staff, and we have been following this. We kind of know who's been in, who's out. Uh, where do things stand this morning? Who is on the short list? Uh, look, the president said yesterday uh, with the newly elected governors in, in the cabinet room uh, for all the world to see that he had about five people uh, he was considering. We know he'll make a good choice. He wants someone to come in here uh, to support his agenda, help get that agenda passed moving into uh, the next Congress, and he'll do that. Uh, there are a lot of people who want the job. We've whittled down the list now to about five, and the president will make that decision and that announcement when he's ready. Okay. When will, how long will Senator, uh, Secretary Kelly stay on? I'm not sure what the, the actual plan is. I know he's on through at least the end of the year, but I mean, the president yeah. plans I, to I make heard a January 2nd. Quickly. I just didn't know if that was a more pliable date. Could, could he stay on for another month and a half, maybe? Give well, look, he is. It, it, I, I imagine he, if he and the president need to work a deal out like that, they absolutely can. John Kelly has done an amazing job as chief of staff serving this president. He is uh, a dear friend of mine and one of the funniest people, quite frankly, in the White House that mm -hmm. I know. Uh, but, uh, you know, the president's uh, going to make another pick. And when that pick is announced and, and brought into the office, John Kelly will move on okay. to his next, next deal, which I'm sure will be successful. Is, it, is there a general expectation on timing for that, that you could manage our expectations year end? Yeah. I think I think the end of the year is right, uh, the beginning of January. But again, it, it's their prerogative. If they want to continue on, if the president hasn't made his mind up yet, then then uh, that I'm sure that they can do that. Mm -hmm. But right now, the president has said he has five people, and he's going to, going to make the announcement eminently. So we expect him to do just that. Good to have you on today. Hope you come back real soon. Got a lot more to go through. Hogan Gidley, thanks from the North Lawn. Thanks, Hogan. Thanks so much.